everyone. Today's video is about introducing our line of Locobot rovers. So we're gonna have a couple parts of the video. Uh, first is gonna be sort of a compare and contrast from our current TurtleBot 2i to our line of Locobots. And then we're gonna discuss the full line of Locobots. We have four different versions and some different options. And we're gonna talk about the software options and packages that come with them as well. So we can't really have a video that talks about TurtleBot without talking about the history of the TurtleBot a little bit. The TurtleBot was invented way back in the day at Willow Garage, uh, and it was invented by two people, Tolly Foote and Melanie Wise were the inventors. And their basic concept was that they wanted to lower the bar of entry for ROS. So back then, it was really only really expensive robots that you could do ROS development on. There was the PR2. Well, a shot from difficult angles. Oh. and a couple other of basically industrial sized robots. And they realized that the market could grow, a lot more schools and a lot more researchers could get involved if they lowered the bar of entry uh, in two ways. One was in cost, so the hardware had to come down in cost uh, drastically, and the other was in software. So they actually sat down and spent um, weeks if not months writing drivers. They chose the iCreate, so if everyone knows when the Roomba first came out, uh, it was a huge hit and they made a version of it called the iCreate, which was made for developers. So they used that. Uh, they also wanted to use low-cost, off-the-shelf parts. So the Kinect was popular back then. They got the Kinect, and they found a laptop, and they put those three together, and that was basically the first TurtleBot. And so they released it as an open-source project. They started working with other companies that started turning it into a kit. Um, you had a lot of independent people in schools that were building it on their own and end up being a huge hit. And what was great about that is it allowed people to share code um, between schools. You basically publish your projects and other people could repeat it. And then you could also even upgrade some of the sensors or parts and make it your own while still reusing code instead of being you know, on your own in a silo, doing everything from scratch. And uh, as we've talked about here for many years, uh, being able to share code and reproduce code and projects is a huge thing in robotics because then you're not starting from scratch. So that's kind of a little history of a turtle bot. Um, Rick, when did we make ours? So we came out with our iteration and uh, what we got here for you guys is the TurtleBot 2i. Uh, I stands for Interbotics. Uh, back in 2018. Uh, now the specific challenge we tried to solve with this is uh, we actually had a number of customers coming to us uh, looking for arms that would actually interface with these. And a lot of what we heard was that there wasn't anything in the community um, that was easily accessible for those researchers that wanted to add that level of manipulation into their mobile robotics. Uh, so we came out with this, which is basically your standardized you know, turtle bot uh, with the addition of a four degree of freedom arm with a simple parallel gripper, as you see on the front here. Yeah, so this is one of our best sellers for a long time before we yes. even sold the turtle bot. This Absolutely. Is, this is the pincher, which is made out of robotis uh, AX12 servos, and we would sell this as a kit, and people would put this on their turtle bots. And part of our concept was, why don't we just put the whole kit together for everybody, right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, it sells well, still does. Um, there's a very particular uh, customer, and part of the reason you know we're doing this video is to kind of illustrate the pros and cons of each platform, uh, so you guys can make a better decision on what's going to go better in your you know application. Yeah. So. The next thing we want to do is a, a bit of a compare and contrast between the two kits um, to point out the differences of what we've done in the Locobot, which is basically, even though it's got a different name, it's basically the next generation of a turtle bot. So let's do a basic compare and contrast on the hardware overview between the two platforms. On the original TurtleBot 2i, these were all acrylic plates and these are all individual standoffs. So there's a lot of parts that you put together. Uh, the acrylic plates are great, they're lightweight and they're very cheap, but they are prone to cracking. So people, when they would transport their robots, you know, could end up cracking the plates. The new plates are all three millimeter aluminum. So they're extremely strong and you're never gonna break them. And instead of all these little standoffs with spacers, we moved over to 2020 extruded aluminum which is also nice because it's very quick breakdown and assembly of the robot. Uh, they're both still on the Kabuki bases, yep. which were also designed by Melanie and Tully, by the way. Um, they got a dream project to be able to scope out what their base would be, and uh, Eugen Robot basically made it. Yep. So it's a great platform, so that's still the same. 
They both still have Nook computers underneath that have plenty of power to run your ROS programs. The older one had some more power management on it. It had a open UPS so that you could hot swap between the battery and between charging. And we thought that would be a, a great feature to put on the robot. Ended up not being a feature people used very often. So there was a lot of wiring and there's a lot of um, uh, bugs that were, were, were in there that we just basically stripped out and got rid of. Uh, this also had a battery pack that was basically an RC car battery, which, you know, could be prone to being poked or... Could be dangerous. Or, yeah, could set on fire. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, like any of the old school robots that all used RC car batteries. The new one uses a power bank. So you have an enclosed battery. It's got its own power management inside of it. It's much cleaner. It's much nicer. And then uh, what is this camera that's on here? So that is the short range Orbeck Astrocam. Uh, so that's going to be taking the place... Uh, the real sense up here there you go. takes the place of the fact that we have a real sense on top Correct. and an Orbeck. Correct. So instead of having two cameras on the turtle bot, you have one and it's actually on a pan and tilt. So what's nice about this is it can look down like this original real sense and do everything with uh, the arm and vision. And then it can also look up and be part of your navigation and your slam, whereas this was locked in place and you had a second camera down here. So less power consumption, less packages, less code. Uh, all the way around between the two. And then you also now have a LiDAR on top of the Locobot, which is an added sensor for better navigation, um, which improves upon the 3D camera itself. When it comes to the arms, this is the old pincher arm uh, made on the older servos from Robotis. And this is now the X-Series servos, which are the latest servos from Robotis. It's still called the pincher, um, and they're very similar. This one looks better, and it has newer servos. Uh, we've also added an AR tag into the system. We'll talk about that more in software. And I think that covers most of the major differences between the two. So with the old TurtleBot design, everything would come unassembled. And so there were a lot of hours of assembly involved with this robot. Uh, in the old days, you would just find a BOM online and have to get all your own parts. The next evolution were companies like us that actually put it all in a box for you and let you assemble it. We found from customer feedback that people don't even want to be doing that. They want to be coding. So we end up making the local bot pre-assembled. The only thing that's not assembled on here is the tower. So you got to put the three bars on and you've got to run a couple of your, your cables for power and communications. And that's it. You can have this thing assembled in 15 minutes. Whereas this was what, a couple hours? Yeah, so the, the TurtleBot 2i is definitely still a capable platform. Uh, it's certainly also a labor of love. Um, you know, when we think about the robotics that we design here, we, we do it for the end user. And one of the things we heard repeatedly uh, was that this guy, while a perfectly capable platform, um, it's very difficult to put together. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've personally helped customers assemble these things uh, over countless hours. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they really just want to get into uh, that autonomous navigation, the object manipulation. You know, they, they want to do the development work. So when we sat down, and we took a look at uh, you know, the, the next iteration of the mobile robotics here, um, we wanted to solve all that for you guys. Uh, so what we did um, is we completely eliminated 95% uh, of the assembly. What, what you see here is not too dissimilar than what you would actually receive in a box. Uh, as Matt pointed out earlier, mm -hmm. this camera tower is the only thing that needs to be assembled for the robot. Uh, so when you take this out of the box, um, our mission with these guys is to get uh, developers and researchers and students alike up and running as quickly as possible um, and doing the work that they bought the platform for. Now, if you're the type that likes the DIY, that likes to build things with their hands, um, again, TurtleBot 2i, definitely there for you. Still available and it is a little cheaper because of that Yes, factor. it is, absolutely. Yeah, so you will save money on the older 2i still. Um, these come at a little bit higher price point, um, but that's the convenience of pulling out of the box and having it operating in 15 minutes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new today. We'll have links in the description below to any of the kits or hardware that you saw in the video. Remember, anytime any of that's purchased, it helps us as a company keep producing free content. Um, please feel free to comment in the comments below on things that you're interested in or questions you might have or any ideas about future videos that you'd want to see us get into. We're always interested in seeing how we can help the community keep innovating. Thanks again for watching.